Welcome grade nines. I hope that the first exercise in compound interest went well. Um, I know it might seem a little bit tedious, but it's really important that we understand how compound interest works. The good news is that today we're going to learn a nice formula that's not so bad to memorize, but it's going to save us a lot of time. It's going to allow us to shortcut all the way to the end of an investment. And then later on, we're going to see how we can also use this formula to work out different parts of the investment. So for example, what should the interest rate be or how long should the time be or how much should I invest? Okay, so here is our compound interest formula. Okay, let's compare it very quickly to how similar it is to our simple interest formula. We have A is equal to P1 plus I times N. This is our simple interest formula. What's the difference between these two? Well, it's really only with the location of N. If we notice in our compound interest formula, here, n is an exponent. We are raising that bracket to the exponent or the power of the number of years. Whereas in our simple interest, we are multiplying. So the formulas are very, very similar. That should help you to learn them. They both have 1 plus i. But with compound interest, n is outside the bracket as an exponent. With simple interest, n is inside the bracket and we're multiplying by n. So because these formulas are so similar, then these letters represent the same ideas as what we did with the simple interest formula. So for example, A is the total accumulated amount of money in my bank account at the end of my investment. Now remember, we can also have a compound interest loan, in which case A represents the total repayment of that loan. It's going to be more than I borrowed. Okay, P represents our principal amount, which is at the beginning, at the start. And then that can either be what I originally invested or my original loan. In other words, how much I borrowed. N is the time period. And remember we said in grade 9, we compound things annually. So N represents how many years my money is sitting in that account for, or how long my loan is. And I is my interest rate. Which remember must either be as a decimal, or as a fraction over 100. So remember your I value is the rate divided by 100. So now we're going to use the formula to go back to those examples that we did yesterday. And yesterday we did them the long way. We found out the value of Alyssa's investment at the end of each year. And we used the value at the end of the year as a principal amount for the beginning of the new year. But now we can use the formula. So remember Alyssa deposited 3,000 Rand. Think about which letter that's going to represent. The account offered 8,2% per annum compound interest. And we want to know how much she has in the account. And it's all of the money after four years. So we need to choose the formula. A is equal to P, 1 plus I, with an exponent of N. As we read the story, well, they asked us for the total amount of money in the account. That's an A value. P represents the initial investment, which in this case was 3,000 Rand. The interest rate is 8,2 over 100, which we can write in its decimal form as 0,082. Remember the zero here. And finally, the time period, they said after four years. So remember yesterday, we went and had to do four calculations at the balance at the end of every year. Now, if we've learned the compound interest formula, we can substitute the values in, and it's going to shortcut us all the way to the end. So if we type that into our calculator and we use this button to choose our exponent and our exponent here needs to be 4. So if we type that in, we get the answer 4,111 Rand and 78 cents. And if you go back to yesterday's work and look at example A with Alyssa, we see that we got to exactly the same answer, but with a lot more work. Okay, let's do example B with Nadine who's going on tennis tour. And remember, she borrows 3,000 Rand. So remember that 
when we borrow, the loan is always at the beginning of the investment. The bank's charging her an interest rate of 9,6% per annum compounded annually. So our interest rate is 9,6 out of 100, which as a decimal is 0 0,096. How much interest does Nadine have to pay after three years? The three years, well, we know that's the end value. But now they're looking at only the interest that Nadine has to pay. Well, we want compound interest, but there's no formula that gives us compound interest in one step with PI and N. We have to find the total amount of her loan repayment. How much is she going to have to pay back this bank after three years? Then the compound interest is going to be her repayment minus her initial loan. The difference between the two is the interest that she's paid. So we write down our formula to make sure our substitution is accurate and it will help us to learn our formula. So we now substitute 30,000 Rand in place of P. with an exponent of 3. When we type this into our calculator, we see that Nadine owes the bank after 3 years 39,495 Rand with 98 cents. So she has to repay the bank this and she borrowed 30,000 Rand. So therefore her compound interest, how much interest did she have to pay? Well, she paid the difference which is 9,495 Rand and 98 cents. And if you go back and check your answer yesterday to example B, you'll see we got to the same answer, but with a lot more work. So we see that the formula is gonna save us a lot of time, but we have to be careful to memorize it exactly. Okay, let's look at Ashley's problem here. Ashley invests 2,000 Rand at 13% per year compounded for two years. Thereafter, the interest rate changes to 11,2% per annum. How much money will Ashley have? So that's an A value. If the duration of the whole investment is eight years. For these type of problems where we have multiple things happening, it's a nice idea to use a timeline to capture all the story. Remember, time is money. Everything in money happens over time. So, we start off at the beginning, T0, nothing's happened yet. And what happens at the beginning? She deposits 2,000 Rand. Then it says that this money grows for two years. So that money is sitting inside an account gaining interest for two years. What is the interest rate? 13% is 0 0.13. So her money has grown to more than 2,000 Rand after two years. But then the interest rate changes. And now for the remaining time, it says the interest rate is going to be 11,2%. Well, that's going to be 0 0,112 as a rate. The total duration of the investment is eight years. So how long is this money gaining interest at this rate? Well, the difference between 2 and 8 is 6 years. So we're going to use two compound interest formulas here to get forward to what's the total amount after 8 years. So for the first 2 years, the value at T2 is going to be 2,000 Rand, 1 plus 0, 0,13, with an exponent of 2. So this is now going to be slightly more than 2,000 Rand because we've earned interest. And if we use our decimals here, we see that we've got 2,553 Rand with 80 cents. Okay, we don't have to worry about lots of decimals there. So that means at this point in time, her investment is worth 2,500 Rand. This then becomes a p-value to go forward for the next one. So, for the next six years, 
we're going to find out what is the accumulated amount. Now we use this amount. Her investment has grown to 2,500 Rand. And that's our p-value. Now we have a different interest rate. And our exponent now is not 8. It's 6. This money is receiving interest for 6 years at that rate. So if you use your calculator, you can use the answer key like we did yesterday. And we have an exponent here of 6. So the final value is 4,828 Rand and 54 cents. Look at that, 537, that becomes 54 cents. Now, that's the safe way of doing this. And I hope you followed what happened over time there. Now I'm going to show you a really fancy way of getting to the same answer and you'll never be required to do it this way. But I want you to think about what we did here. This calculation gave us this number, which we then put there. So in one fancy one step way we can do this, we could say her final value is going to be the 2000 Rand. 1 plus 0, 0,13 for 2 years. And then this becomes the p-value for the other remaining 6 years. My interest rate of 6. And so we've got this whole long calculation here. Can't even fit on the screen. But if we push equals, we see that we get exactly the same answer as we did doing it in 2 steps. So say... You don't have to do it in the short way. And shortcuts are always dangerous if they lead us to make mistakes. But if what I did here was made perfect sense to you, then you're welcome to do it. Okay, so now you're going to go and grab your classroom math textbook and you're going to go to page 23. Then you need to go and do exercise 1.12. 1.12. Okay, uh, seven questions, but now that you're using the formula, and I want you to practice using the formula here, you're going to see that these questions go very quickly. If you are stuck without a textbook, then you need to contact your teacher or ask your friends to send you photographs of the exercise. But the memo to the exercise will be up on the Google Drive. Then I'm also going to do a bonus video where we look at where this formula comes from, just like we did a simple interest for those of you who are interested. Good luck.